I'm so, I'm sorry, uh, Facebook and YouTube. I tried to tag someone and I hit the finish button, so we got to start over. So, you that was watching, um, come on up again and I'll tag you. I won't finish like I did last time. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so we're in Proverbs uh, chapter one. It's the first day of the month, and we always read Proverbs chapter one on the first day of the month. Now, there's a truth here. God laughs. I say God laughs at most Christians uh, when they pray. And I'm going to prove it to you today in Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, do you want the tag? Here he is again. Okay, I'm going to tag you this time. I'm not going to get rid of this. There you go. You're tagged. There will be others coming on here to be tagged too. I don't know how this you, uh, Facebook works, but I know when you tag someone, it gives you more viewers. So, And some of them bring you a whole bunch of viewers. So I, I tag people. <laughs> so I, I want more people here because this is a good one uh so uh proverbs chapter one we're gonna i'm gonna teach you today and prove to you from the bible that the majority of christians the vast majority of christians that pray god laughs at them first of all most christians don't pray at all anyway because they're ashamed of their wicked life and they know they're far away from god so they don't pray anyway but if they do pray god laughs at them you say i don't believe that if some people tell me god God treats everyone the same. No, he doesn't. Uh, God, li God likes some folks more than others. God don't like everybody the same. Now, as far as salvation, he likes everybody the same. Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you call upon the name of the Lord, and you can be saved. And at the foot of the cross is level about salvation. But as far as answered prayers and blessings, uh, God is picky, and he has favorites. How many of you want to be in, in God's favor? You want to be in God's favor? Yeah, I do. How, how many of you want to have how many of you want to have your prayers answered? Amen? Uh, how, how, how many of you want God to laugh when you pray? Oh, not me. And I hope you don't either. So let's look at it. Verse 20, Proverbs 1. Remember uh, the wisdom of God. Who, who, who wrote the Proverbs? Anybody remember who wrote them? Solomon. Yeah, he was a king, Solomon. He was the son of of uh david and and he was he he asked he he could ask for anything he wanted back up a little this thing is getting bright again i don't know the way the sun hits or something but he could ask for anything he wanted could ask for anything he wanted and he asked for wisdom that was that was a, a wise thing so god granted him granted solomon wisdom and he was able to write these books of wisdom the proverbs and he also gave him fame and wealth and all all the rest. You see, he gave him the gave him the whole ball of wax, <clears throat> but all he asked for was wisdom. And God added this other stuff to him. You understand? So let's look at this wisdom. By the way, th this wasn't this wasn't Solomon's wisdom. This was God's wisdom. Someone I I saw someone commentating on the Bible saying that. Uh, uh, why so and so? Uh, I forget who, what Bible. There's some 40 to 45 authors that wrote the Bible. They just penned it down. God wrote it. You know, the Bible's forever been settled in heaven. It, it ain't nothing new. It, 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 this book of Proverbs wasn't wasn't uh, Solomon's idea. It was God's word that had been settled in heaven forever. Uh, uh, he just he just wrote it down. Uh, false teachers and people that are not Bible believers. They say. Oh, you believe in mechanical dictation. You call anything you want. I know the word of God was settled in heaven forever, and God told man how to pen it down word for word. Amen. It doesn't even just say word for word. The Bible says every jot and tittle. You know what a jot and tittle is? That's punctuation marks. Amen. He, he not only settled <clears throat> the words in heaven, but the punctuation marks. So all of this, um, and in the English-speaking language, this is it. Uh, it's the authorized version or the King James Bible. Amen. Wisdom cried without, verse 20, Proverbs 1. She uttereth her voice in the streets. So wisdom's crying out, God's wisdom. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? He's asking us that today. And the scorners delight in their scorning you know scorners weren't listening to the wisdom of god they're scorners and fools hate knowledge so scorners and fools and worldly uh uh dummies 
uh, they they mock God and they mock the word of God now look at verse 23 chapter 1 turn ye at my reproof God speaking behold I will pour out my spirit uh, unto you I will make known my words unto you see there's actually there's actually words of God the word of God remember that the word of God it's so important and we must have it more and more I, I just depend upon the word of God I don't read a lot of commentaries anymore I don't read a lot of books much I just focus on the word of God word of God remember this uh, as, as anybody uh, I, I offered a $20 bonus to anybody that would memorize the books of the Bible the 66 books of the Bible and Psalm 1 now if there's anybody uh, in Sunday school here this morning that can tell me uh, by memory without looking down at them and reading them off a piece of paper uh, if, 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 if you can tell me the books of the books of the Bible uh, by memory 66 books 39 Old Testament 27 new and and word for word uh, that you memorized in the authorized version the King James Bible if if, if, you, if you stand up and tell it to me now I'll give you a $20 bill I'll put a $20 bill in your hand anybody gonna do it this morning anybody gonna do it come on now folks you're dragging your feet Evidently, I got a rich congregation. Ain't nobody interested in twenty dollar bill. They won't even memorize the books of the Bible and uh, and and Psalm chapter one. So I'll I'll leave it open for another week. I might not leave it open for other, but if you get it between now and next Sunday, I'll put a twenty dollar bill in your hand. How, how many of you like to have a twenty dollar bill in your hand? It's like, I'll like show you what like a twenty dollar bill. All right, then you're gonna have to work for a little bit. You want to tag this guy? I already tagged him. Okay. Um, verse 23 turn ye at my reproof what, what does reproof mean Sunday school we talk to each other in Sunday school uh, what, what, what does it mean for me uh, to reprove my child or my, or my grandchild or someone that works for me what, what, what does it mean to reprove anybody know what's that mean huh come on what's it mean first of all let me ask you if you don't want to tell me what it means uh, reproof right, right. it's it's necessary but it it kind of might be able to get under our skin won't it reproof means that we're being reprimanded or we're being told something that's not right in our life that's what reproof is if I've got to reproof my children or my grandchildren or someone that works for me or or uh, if, if sometimes uh, right now from the right now from the pulpit I'm, I'm going to give some reproof to church members and people that aren't members of my church that are out there on Facebook or YouTube but but reproof uh, is something where you're trying to get someone's attention and get them off the wrong path you understand how many of you that are here, like me, I'll identify with you. How many of you are here, we need reproof in our life? How many of you need reproof in your life? Well, sure we do. Everybody here does. Because we get off that straight and narrow sometime. I'm talking about, I'm, ta I'm not just talking to lost people that aren't saved. I'm talking about born-again people, too. Because the Bible says in 1 John 1, 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Um, uh because we've all sinned then the first john 1 9 to christians it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so reproof is necessary turn to you at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you so uh, what spirit's he talking about the holy ghost the holy spirit amen so he'll turn he's gonna he's gonna uh pour out the whole that we need the holy spirit we need the holy ghost if we're saved, we've been convicted by the Holy Ghost. We turn from our sins, and we. I was talking to Wallace this morning. He says he's saved about 13 years old. I was saved when I was 29 years old. Different people saved different ages in their life. But you must be born again. Some of you sitting in here ain't even saved. How do you know? Yet? Because you told me you ain't saved. We got people sitting in there right now in Sunday school that aren't saved. They need to be saved. Turn ye at my behoof, because so the Holy Spirit convicts us. The Holy Spirit 
when we call upon him, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And once we get saved, then we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, you understand. All right. So it says once we're saved, then he'll pour out his spirit upon us so we can live right. If we walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, then we'll do what? We will not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. Amen? We're in Proverbs chapter 1. And we're on verse 23. Verse 24. Because I have called and you refuse. So, so God, uh, through uh, Solomon, King Solomon, who, who penned down these words, God, through King Solomon, penned down the word of God and, and uh, because I have called, he called you, he reproved you, he tried to straighten us out, and he refused. See, many times you and I, not the, the lost person today, if you're lost here today, God's been calling you to salvation because God's not willing any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. God says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody that will repent and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me, once someone does that, they're a born-again Christian. And then you have the Holy Spirit living in you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can't lose your salvation. I, uh, I was saved in a Methodist church. The Methodists believe you can lose your salvation. I didn't stay in the Methodist church because I don't believe you can lose your salvation. I don't believe the Bible teaches it. I'm glad I got saved in a Methodist church. But there are some denominations teach you can lose your salvation. How can you lose it if it was a free gift? You can't lose a free gift. You're in the family, amen? amen? Now, we can be disobedient children, but we're in the family if we call upon the name of the Lord. But if, if you refuse to call upon Him to be saved and trust in the blood of Christ and turn from your wicked sins and repent, you can't be saved. But once you are saved, you can also refuse instruction of the Bible and be a disobedient Christian. Verse 24, continuing, I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. This is talking about Christians, unsaved and Christians. But ye have set it not on my counsel, and would none of my reproof. You see, if you won't listen to God, there are many times, like some of you, you in here, and you say, I believe in Christ, I'm saved, but you won't quit drinking. You won't quit smoking. You won't quit checking up. You won't quit your laziness. You, 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 you live like the devil. And uh, I'm going to tell you this. If you live like the devil, don't come around trying to ask me to sign an affidavit that you're saved. You're probably of your daddy the devil if you live like the devil. You say, you mean a Christian can't sin? A Christian can sin. And a Christian does sin. But they need to repent. Amen. And if you won't repent, your, your prayers ain't. Your prayers ain't going no further than the roof here. Amen. Look here, I can, I can touch the roof. Yeah. But if I ain't right with God, Come on, man. My, my prayers ain't going no higher than that. No. True. I didn't realize I was that tall. Stand up, Gary. Stand up. No, no, just right there where you are. See if you can touch the roof. Well, see, I'm taller than Gary. Here's a real tall guy. Front row. Stand up. See if you can touch the roof. Don't go on your tiptoes. Oh, he can. All right. Let me get a little short, fat guy. Uh, stand, stand up. Stand up. Oh, man, he's about two feet away from us. I can't reach it. I got rubber arms. But you see here, look at, hey, Billy Joe, you can sit down, Victor. Billy Joe, don't you wish you was tall as I? You could reach up here oh, and touch the roof, push up the ceiling top. Man, I could run wire and push up the ceiling tile. And... <laughs> no, I'm on, a, I'm on a platform a little bit higher. But some of you that are in here today that are Christians, you can't get a prayer past the ceiling tile. You know why? You live like the devil. You see, a, a Christian can't sin. Oh, David figured out to a man after God's own heart, he figured out how to commit adultery and murder somebody. Huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah he had to repent. Uh, yeah. Psalm 51. You, 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 you read Psalm 51 uh, of the, 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 the repentance of David. Now, it cost him something. Little baby died, and his family always was at war and trouble, and, and it, 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 uh, he had to pay the price for his sin. Now, he still was a Christian, but there was a, there was a price to pay. And he didn't have the prayers answered he used to and all that. So remember that. 
Now let's look at this, why God laughs at some people. <laughs> but ye have said it not on my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Look at verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. He said, oh, God will always get me out of trouble. It doesn't say that here, does it? No, no. I mean, if he reproves you, and you're living in sin and aren't following God, you're going to get in a straight. You're going to say, oh, Lord, this is rough. Oh, Lord, help me. You know what God's going to do? Oh, you've asked me, so I'm going to help you. He's going to say, <laughs> Go ahead, smart aleck. Go ahead, big shot. Go ahead, know it all. You won't listen to me. You listen out there on Facebook and send it to someone else, too. You won't listen to me. And you expect to call and get out of your calamity? No. Nah. You made the mess. You won't repent. Get out of your own mess. And you're going to be wallowing in your mess. Am I telling the truth or not? Is that what the Bible says here or not? Amen. People ain't going to like this. It's going to be out there on Facebook. God doesn't. God laughs at most Christians' prayer. You know why I say most Christians? Because most Christians are backslidden. Did you know why Daytona Beach is going to hell in a handbasket? Because you ain't got but a couple of Christians that'll live for him and win souls and have the power of God upon them to win souls. You don't have anybody here. That, that's why there's no revival in Daytona Beach. That's why there's no revival in our church. I've been part of revival in several places around the country. They ain't broke out here yet. Why? Too many backslidden Christians. Too much beer in the icebox. Amen. Too much <laughs> cigarettes in the in the purse and in the pocket. Yeah. Too much shacking up going on. Too much wickedness in the church. God don't put up with it. God God can't. God literally <laughs> He laughs at us. Because we're so sorry as his children. God, don't tell me. I, I talk to you every day. People come and say, well, Pastor Varga, you've got to understand about the mercy of God and the grace of God. I can do anything I want, and God's just going to be merciful to me and graceful to me, and I'm going to get in the straight, and he's just going to, everything going to be okay. Oh, no, he's going to laugh at you, and and, and, and you ain't going to be able to pray and, 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 and have your uh, prayers go past, past the roof. Repentance isn't just for lost people. Repentance is for Christians too. You understand? Yeah. We continue. To, we, we need to repent and turn from our sins to be saved. And then we need to repent from our sins after we're saved to be right with God. And have it. That's a dear uh, Doris come to today. She just stopped in for a minute. She'd been sick. She went to Jacksonville to see some more doctors on Friday. And she got some more tests. She stopped in for a minute to say hello was so glad and we were blessed to see her and she had to go home and rest my dear wife she's not feeling well she's recovering from a gallbladder <laughs> surgery it was infected and it's taken time to recuperate and 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 things but but you know i tell you what uh i want my wife praying for me my wife gets her prayers answered she could she pray she she pray about everything she taught me this many years ago christmas time well, she don't just do it at Christmas time, but uh, she, we be going somewhere. I be driving and and uh, we we pull up to. I get a place right in front. She says, "Praise God, thank you, Lord Jesus." I said, well, "What do you mean?" She said, "I prayed for a parking spot." I said, oh, you're kidding me. You don't pray for a parking spot. Do you? She said, oh, yeah. She said, I always pray for a parking spot. And I said, I ain't going to waste my time praying for So I didn't waste my time praying for a parking spot. You know where I parked? Out there in the boondocks. <laughs> you know, when she was with me and she parked, you know where we parked? Right up front. <laughs> right up front. So finally... My old wife taught me something. I, I pray for parking places now. 
You said, is it worth it? Yeah, if you don't want to walk a long way. <laughs> she taught me that. I taught it to my grandkids. Jackson's home with my, I love my kids and my grandkids, of course. And my, uh, my Andrew had been kind of watching her when I couldn't be home. I've been with her myself pretty much all the time. But if I'm not able to be there, like here preaching uh, this morning, Sunday school and church, uh, uh, Andrew's there, but he's uh, he had to go um, uh, visit his brother in, in Georgia. That big thing, his brother worked for a big, big church. They have big doings for 4th of July. And he's in Atlanta uh, at the big church where his brother works. He's going to be there for a few days. But Jackson's there now. And Jackson and, and Elizabeth, when they were little, this was years ago, I told them about, uh, I, I told them, I, I, I taught them. I said, okay, we went to the mall because uh, you, you know how the grandkids, they want, uh, what, what the grandkids always want to do or the kids, they want you to take them to the mall for what? To buy them something, amen? Is that, is that the way it is with kids and grandkids? Yeah, they want you to buy them something. And of course, mine did the same as yours and, and so the grandkids. And I said, well, kids, I learned this from grandma. Now, I, you got to have faith to do this. You ain't got no faith, you can't do it. I said, Grandma taught me that we can get a parking place if we pray, and I laughed at her. But she kept praying and getting a parking place, and I kept not praying and walked a long way. So, so I'm, I'm praying now. I says, you watch. I'm going to pray, and we're going to get a parking place right up. Oh, and they, they looked at me, you know. I said, Lord, help us now. I, I want to teach my grandkids, Jackson and Elizabeth, uh, how they can... Uh, God answer their prayer even for a parking place. Now, Lord, we're here to shop and help us that we get a place right up front. I said, Amen. So I drove up there by the front. We just get there, and, and you, you, you know how it is at Christmas time. People just sitting there waiting for a spot to open, especially if you're up close. Am I telling the truth or not? You've done that, haven't you? You want to get up there close, and. And I just drove up there by the front, and, and uh, all of a sudden, boom, here it is. Backup lights are on. He pulls out. I pull in right up front. Yeah. My, my grandkids looked at me. You know, they still weren't believers yet. I said, Grandma taught me that. I, I'm just like you. I didn't believe her. So, of course... They always bother me, go buy him something at the shopping mall, you know, grandkids. And it, it'd be today, today, if Jackson's, well, I don't know if you're watching or not, I don't see him out here now, but he may look at it later. But I know what he'll say. Grandpa, if we get a minute, you think we can stop at the mall? <laughs> or stop at some other place, uh, game shop or something. You know how you know how kids are. He's, uh, how old is he? Twelve. And, uh, He'd be one. So we went back another time. I said, well, here we go. Lord, help us now. You did it last time. Uh, would you do it again? I know you'd do it again. Give us another parking place. Drive up close to the front. Guy pulls out, I pull in. I said, see there? <laughs> what I was doing, I trained him in something. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'll tag this guy. I'll tag all of you. Oh, yeah, you can come on. Give it to someone else. Tag folks. Hit this. We do it. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, finally, I did it a few times, and it worked every time. You say, that don't make sense. God answers prayer if you behave yourself. Amen? Amen. You pray for a parking place, and you're living like the devil. God will laugh at you. You say you think you're, so, I'm not so hot, but I work at it. I try, I try to do right. Amen. I ain't perfect by a long shot, but I, I'm working at it, friend. I mean, I, I mean that with all my heart. I work at being a good Christian. I ain't as good a Christian as I should be. I should be a lot better. But I'm working at it, and I do something wrong. I'm quick to repent and try to get right with God. I ain't going to live in sin. problem with you, a lot of you, you're going to go home and shack up tonight. You're going to go out and get some beer. You're going to go out and smoke a cigarette. You can't even... 
uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you out here in a couple minutes. You go run out there by the garbage cans where you belong and suck on a lousy cancer stick. Hey, shame on you. Mm -hmm. You want God's blessing to you. Okay. Okay. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> Yeah. No, it's so finally, here we go. Jackson and Elizabeth again. I like this story. You said I don't like you tell it. I don't care if you like it or not. I like to hear it myself and tell it. And so I said, okay. Back at the shopping mall, their favorite place to take Grandpa, okay? <laughs> so they said, Grandpa, so I get there. We pull on the edge, place is loaded. I said, who's going to pray and get us through to get a parking place? They both said they, they were going to pray. I didn't say I was going to pray. I didn't pray. I was okay. You're both going to pray. And I said, pray. We're riding. I said, anybody get through yet? You know, God will tell you when you get through on prayers. I mean, maybe you never had a prayer answered in your life. I don't know, but but uh, but God's spirit to bear witness with our spirit that we got through. I mean that. He'll tell you, yeah, you're going to get that. I don't know. I've, I've had it a lot of times in my life. Not with just parking places, with some big times. A lot of times, a lot of different things. I mean, I can't go into all that, but it happened to me a whole bunch of times. Has anybody get through yet? And they just looking at each other and looking at me. And uh, I think, I think this is what happened. Neither one of them give me assurance that they got through. And I says, I get through. And so I prayed, pulled up close, guy pulled out, I pulled in. <laughs> at least I got him praying, but didn't have assurance yet. So guess what? Next time I was with them, where'd they want to go? Huh? The mall, of course. They always want to go to the mall. I ain't never been with my grandkids when they don't want to go to the mall. <laughs> huh? That's true. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I got to finish this story because I'm out of time. But anyway, we went and they said, I'll pray. And Jackson sounded more excited. Jackson's over my house. Now I'm going to tell about this one. I'm going to have him watch it on YouTube too. And uh, they prayed, and it was it, it 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 was just a minute or two. It wasn't long. And he says, "Okay, Grandpa, I got through." I says, "Are you sure you got through?" He says, "Yeah, I got through." We pulled up, car backed out, we pulled in. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Why don't you start getting some parking places? <clears throat> Why don't you start getting some stuff from God? Yeah. Why don't you repent? Right, right. Why don't you turn at God's reproof? You say, well, how's God going to reprove you? I'm going to tell you, every day I read the Bible a lot. I read the Bible morning, noon, and night, because that, that's what the Bible says in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. In his law doth he meditate day and night. Did you hear that? In his law, that what's at the Bible, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. You, you, uh, Samuel, you're supposed to leave that book out so folks could sign it when they come in. Yeah, that was Samuel's fault. Blame Samuel. Joanne ain't here today. Um, and he be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Or her, either way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I pray day and night. And then... What does God do to you, Pastor Varga, every day? He reproves me. There's not a day goes by. There's not a time goes by when I don't read the Bible for just a few minutes and God tell, shows me something I ain't doing right. You say, oh, I read the Bible. I, I, God never shows me anything I do wrong because you're, a, you're a, a, a Pharisee. 
and you're crooked as a dog's hind leg and you won't admit your sin because the Bible says if we say that we have no sin we lie and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So Sunday school is over. Amen. Let me just finish this. For these that are just coming in, what we're talking about is God laughs at most Christians when they pray. That's the, that's the sermon title. Proverbs 1 is the text. Verse 25, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. It all has to do with God telling us to do something in the Bible and we won't do it. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your, verse 27, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Amen. When distrust and anguish cometh upon you, then shall he call upon me. But I will not answer. You see there, God will laugh at you. Yeah. But I will not answer. Amen. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. You don't fear God. The preacher preaches. You read it, and you don't care anything about it. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore, see, there's, a, there's, a, there's conditional. Prayer is conditional. You won't listen to the proof of God. Therefore, shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Look at verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, unto God, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. So there it is. God laughs. <laughs> When most Christians pray because you won't listen to reproof, you live like the devil, you won't repent and get right with God, don't expect to have your prayers answered. Be honest with you, Doris came in here today for a minute and just say hi. She's not well. She just come in and said hi and went back home to rest. Amen. I covet Doris's prayers. Amen. I covet my wife's prayers. Yes. My wife can pray and get parking places even. I covet people's prayers. There are certain people I covet their prayers. There are certain people in this church I covet their prayers and others I don't. Amen. There are a lot of people in this church that are church members. I care less if you prayed for me or not. Amen. You live like the devil, drinking and smoking and carrying on and shacking up and lying and stealing and every kind of wickedness. I don't care if you pray for me or not. Amen. Because your, your, your prayers, they can't even get past the ceiling tile. Yeah. Give me someone that'll take reproof and get things from God. I want Doris praying for me. I want my wife Amen. praying for I me. Too. I, want Doris praying. I want I want other friends that are godly. Live right, you get your prayers answered. Yeah. Yeah. The sincere prayer. Yeah. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see what I'm saying? A fer the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth Amen. much. Amen. Or righteous, that means mankind, a man or woman. Amen. I want someone that, that knows, that's got God's telephone number. You know what God's telephone number is? Jeremiah 33, 3. You know what Jeremiah 33, 3 is? Call unto me, and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Amen? <laughs> Jeremiah 33, 3. Yeah. God's telephone number. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. And, uh, and I'm glad for it. I don't want God laughing at you, church, when you pray. But he laughs at most Christians. I don't want God laughing at you, Facebook and YouTube, because you won't be reproved. Get right with God. Work towards Amen. perfection. Yes. Amen. And get your prayers answered. Lord, thank you now for our Sunday school class. Help us to study this over and over. Yes. It would be a blessing to us. Bless our church service to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.